right, so we're back for what I would probably call part one of rifle bedding made easy. Um, I kind of showed you the after my rifle bedding project in the first video. I'm going to label this one part one because I'm kind of showing you actually how I went about the process and what this looks like before I actually do the bedding job. So inside the stock, you can see I've been in here with a milling machine, cut out grooves. I opened up the recoil lug area. Um, I, I, you want to make sure you got enough epoxy front and back of that recoil lug. I don't like when they have a narrow recoil lug set. I want to make sure I get plenty of epoxy behind that thing to help hold it and bed it correctly. Um, I leave a little bit on the back on the rear tang because that rear tang is actually set in my height for the tang of the, re the receiver itself. And then also I leave a little bit right here because the pillar in this one is set correctly where my depth of my receiver is actually flush with the, the um, ejector port in the actual stock. So that's all cut out. This has all been cleaned out. We move over to the receiver and I've got tape, electrical tape on the front of the recoil lug for relief. I've got electrical tape across the bottom and I just put it on there and then I take a razor and cut that out for relief on the bottom. And then on this particular gun, because I wanna make sure that the ejector port in the stock and the ejector port on the receiver itself line up and then that's a good fit and finish there. It needed, a, it needed to come up just a little bit, so I've got a little bitty piece of modeling clay right there. Um, and it's got relief agent on it too, so it shouldn't be a problem. So get all that set up, and then I came back and I use um, a release agent, and you can actually see where I kind of sprayed up here a little bit. But I spray the whole thing inside, out. You can actually see, probably got a little heavy right through there. Not a big deal. Um, top of the receiver, everything. So, um, but that's it. That's all you really have to do to get prepped for this. So you see everybody blocking all of this out and worried about all that, and you really don't have to do it that way. Um, my Hawkins bottom middle, you actually see my fingerprints. I will eventually slide this in. As a matter of fact, I'll just do it right now so you can see how I do it. I will take just some light painter's tape and go across it and I just bend it over where it's kind of a tab and that way it's easy for me to grab and then it doesn't stick to other things if I don't want them to and then the screws themselves I'll actually do the exact same thing. I'll put them through the hole and then I'll tape them up. Yep. My tape will hold. <laughs> and again, I leave a little tab so that I can pull it back. Get a little more tape on this one. And through the rear tang. So now, I am fully ready to mix my epoxy, fill up the recoil lug area. I wipe it in. Um, I use this little mixer guy. Um, I wipe it in here. I build some up around this. I'm really careful not to get too much built up around the pillar area. Um, there's going to be enough that squeezes through as is. If you build all this up and don't give it a little bit of room to go, you just end up with a ton down in the, um, the inlet for your bottom metal. Same goes back here. I put enough to make it a really nice clean line all the way through here and then on the, it's, it looks exactly the same on the, the side that you can't really see. Um, I just fill this all this up a little bit, build it up just a bit because you don't need much in the rear. You just need it to hold it and make sure you don't have a secondary recoil point. So this is how I go about it nowadays. Um, if you didn't want your epoxy to run in front of your recoil lug area, you can put more um, clay or whatever you choose to use. I, I've seen several things. I just like clay and that keeps it from going forward. I don't mind just a little bit of a pressure pad in front of the barrel, especially on a hunting rifle. Um, so this particular gun just needed it for fit. So that's where we're at. I'm fixing to mix my Devcon. That's what I like to use, Devcon uh, 10110. And that's basically it. Set it there. Oh, I didn't talk about tightening down. So once I, once I get the epoxy mixed in here, I'll take the barrel, I'll put it down in, and I'll actually use 
the screws, the action screws, to suck this thing down tight. Now here's the key. Once that's in and I've tightened these down and I'll go almost all the way to the bottom where it starts to feel like I'm fixing the bottom out and then I'll back it off about a quarter turn. That way I relieve stress between here and here. You can actually flex this receiver and I've seen a lot of bedding jobs where guys do it with rubber bands and bungee cords and all these things and that works but you got to make sure that you're not actually inducing stress into the receiver from the front action screw to the rear action screw that's just as bad as not betting one so you don't want to defeat yourself i've gone about it a lot of different ways and this is kind of the way i've settled on it seems to work really well screw it down back it out a couple of rounds um, and you're good to go I wait 24 hours before I do anything with it at all, and I try to wait 48 before I shoot it. Uh, I believe there's a DEVCON recommendation on there too, and I, sometimes I go by it, sometimes I don't, that's just me. I will say about the cleaning process, so once this thing's on sucked down, you're going to have, and this is the nice thing about doing it this way, you're going to have epoxy that runs down in the front right here. You're going to have some that runs down on the edges or whatever. You'll pop out that, you'll pop out your bottom middle. And you'll be able to see all of this in there tomorrow. And you just take a little Dremel tool. I'll put it in the mill just to make it a little cleaner. And you just Dremel out what you don't need in there. Because um, it'll go into the safety release, safety area right here on the stock. And um, you'll have some run down in here. And some of it down in here doesn't even really matter. Uh, but you can clean that all up. And then while it's still runny, you're, when you push the front recoil lug screw through, it will absolutely go through this hole. You have to make sure you reach in your receiver and clean all of that out. Um, I use ye old set of these from Harbor Freight and a lot of Q-tips. So I take the plastic Q-tips, just the, the pink guys. Um, you cut them to make them look like that. Now they have a hole in them. And now I just slip it over and I've got a long Q-tip where I can reach in anywhere and you know I can do it on this side too. And I clean up with vinegar. Um, oh, here we go. Got that so I can reach in at a 90. I've got a jar of vinegar that I use. It seems to cut the DEVCON pretty well. And just clean it up. Make sure you don't have any on your stock anywhere. Leave it overnight. Break it all apart the next day. Or if you want to wait 48 hours. And uh, once you get all that cleanup done, you can reach in with your mill, clean all the edges up and stuff to whatever desire you want. I try to make mine as clean as I can because somebody's buying a very expensive custom rifle. Once that's done, I will put this in a vise and I will get a dial caliper and I will actually measure to make sure that once my front recoil screw is tight, that on my rear tang that I'll put that dial caliper on top, that when I tighten the rear calip rear tang down, that my receiver is not moving. If I, if I have any movement once it's tight, on the receiver, that means I've got stress induced into that receiver somewhere, so I've got to find that and, and take care of it. Generally, I don't have it doing it this way. And I don't fight a whole lot. Sometimes it's hard to get the screws to find the correct receiver hole when you're, when you're putting it all together and keep it from lifting or whatever, but that just takes a little bit of time and you learn how to do that, so it's not that big a deal. Guys, appreciate you watching it. Like I said, this will be part one of rifle bedding done easy. And, uh, Hope you enjoy the video.